Chris D. Onofrio Frio writes, so apparently Warner Brothers and Fox are threatening to stop showing footage at Comic-Con because of the Suicide Squad and Deadpool leaks. Why? We were given Star Wars and Batman vs. Superman footage, and those were easily the most anticipated. More important trailers have been leaked in the past, with less harsh threats from studios at a time when they weren't releasing anything from SDCC online. Why such a hostile response now? Well, first of all, I should point out that I, I have not heard uh, the studios directly say that. I know that's that's a report going around, but I haven't heard them say that. But let's, okay, let's go for the assumption for a second that that is indeed what Warner Brothers and, and Fox are threatening that. You know, we're just not going to show anything there anymore. I, this won't be the popular thing to say, but I don't care. This is the truth. They would have every right to feel that way. You know, you go, now some do say, well, you should just know if you're going to show something in, in Hall H at Comic-Con is going to leak out. That's not a good excuse. That's not a good excuse. There is this sense of trust that Warner Brothers puts in Comic-Con and in the fans at Comic-Con. They say, hey, we're going to show you something, but we ask, put your phones away. Don't record this and put this online. And then, I'm sorry, you're a jackhole, then, if you pull out your phone and record it and put it online. There was a trust there. They asked you, they said, we're going to show you this. Something for the fans, just for you guys here at Comic-Con. All we ask is, put your phones away, and some guy thinks he's being a hero. Oh, look how smart I am, because I'm going to stick it to the man, I'm going to take out my phone. Now, there is a le level, let me say this right up front, there is a level of hypocrisy here for people like me to say that, <laughs> well, I'll be one of the first people to watch it once it goes online. I'm not denying that. There's a level of hypocrisy there. Absolutely. But I, when I'm sitting in that, when I'm sitting in that, I, I had no contract with the WB not to watch it if it gets put online. But if I'm sitting in that, in that, in that room, I have an implied contract with WB that says, hey, you're showing this to me and I won't be a jackhole and record it and put it out online when you don't want us to. I'm going to keep my phone in my pocket and I'm not going to take out my camera and shoot it. And I really wish people wouldn't do that. There, there's a sense of entitlement that we as fans have. I'm guilty of it. You guys are guilty of it. You guys are guilty. We all are, I, I admit. But we have to take control of that sense of entitlement to think that, no, no, you students, you owe this to us. We have the right to take what you don't want us to take, and we have the right to do with it whatever we want to do. And I think we just need to grow up a little bit and not do that. So if they did say this, I wouldn't blame them. Like if a studio thinks, okay, for Comic-Con, for the fans there who line up and like it's so important to them that they book time off work and they travel to San Diego... Fine, for those folks, we want something special for them. We're going to show it to them. Even though we don't want to show this to the public yet, we'll show it to you guys at Comic-Con. And now they have to worry about, well, let's not show anything at Comic-Con that we're not ready to go public. And I think fans at Comic-Con are going to suffer for this. And it's just, it's really too bad. I don't know. I'm probably overreacting. Anyway, Schnepp, how do you feel about it? I don't think you're overreacting. I agree with a lot of your points. But I'll say this. As having gone to San Diego Comic-Con specifically since like 1997 and only missing two of them, I've seen that convention grow to the mass crazy, like where you can barely walk, just insanity that it is now. And Hall H has always been giant. But it was never 100% filled except for one or two panels. There weren't those crazy lines. There was like, oh, the panel that you've got to see. And then there was always room for other people to go see, you know, see things. And I think there was a mutual respect thing. But one thing that happened in between that period of time and now is what we all live in, the Internet, which really exploded broadband, the ability to walk around with a, a digital phone and just watch stuff. And I mean, all those things are now just a norm. And so with that comes, I think, an added responsibility to all of the studios, which wasn't there, say, even 10 years ago, which when you bring something to San Diego Comic-Con to you know, throw it down and be like, hey, this is for the fans. Granted, those fans who are seeing it in Hall H are going to see it for the first time. But I, honestly, when you have 7,000 people in there, there is always going to be that one jackhole. And we're going to watch that jackhole's video. That's how I saw the Suicide <laughs> Squad trailer because I couldn't get into. I didn't even have time to stay in line. I was there, but I was like running a booth. So I, I couldn't possibly get into Hall H. So I appreciate that one jerk who put it online. I'm like, thank you, because even though I'm watching a weird trapezoidal, mishy-mashy screen with bad sound, 
That's something that I saw that trailer and I was like, wow, I cannot wait to see that movie. And guess what? It's completely free advertising for every single studio that brings their movie or whatever that is that they're bringing there. I don't want to hear their excuse. It wasn't ready. If it wasn't ready, don't show it to anybody. If you're bringing it to show it to 6,000 fans, imagine all the millions of other fans who desperately want to see that. Drop it like all these other studios did the next day and don't complain about it like some babies. <laughs> I, I, dis I disagree with you because what's the alternative now? Like, there if is I'm, if there's I'm no Warner alternative. Brothers, if I'm Warner Brothers now, it's like, oh, so if I'm not ready to show this to the whole world, then I can't show it at Comic Con? No, you should show Okay, then no. we're not showing it at Comic Con. What you should do then if you were Warner Brothers and say you drop some footage like Batman v Superman, you immediately put it online the very next like three hours, which is what they did. And that's the proper thing that they did with Batman v Superman. Everyone at Hall H got to see that like five hours or four hours before or the whole world did. And that's the cool exclusive. You get to see it first. We're going to release it later. That Suicide Squad trailer is great. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's not like unfinished weird things. There's not a weird cardboard box moving across screen. Every shot's done. It's music. Everything's there. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Like that complaint about we weren't ready and like blaming people, blaming the internet. It's like... Sorry, I'm not going to buy it. They showed it to 6,000 fans. They should have expected it. You know, it's going to get leaked. What they should have been ready and ready to do is just put it online because that way they would have gotten the next 24 million people watching it. They put it online. Everybody exploded and loved the trailer. I'm just saying it's like if you're going to bring something to a gigantic mass hall like Hall H, 6,000 people, you could do a very much more controlled screening if you wanted to and like hand out wristbands and like we've we've rented out this 300 seater. It's a super exclusive. Leave your cell phones here. So if you really cared that much about it and didn't want to sound like crying babies, you would have want, went that next step instead of like slapping your fans on the wrists. That's what it looks like. I, I mean, like I still disagree because I think what, what we're do doing now is putting the studios in a position where, where they have to go, okay, we have this Suicide Squad trailer and because of our marketing strategy, the best time for us to drop this trailer is in three months. But the fans at Comic-Con really want to see it. Now what we've done is we've backed the studios into a corner where they're going to say, Okay, so from now on, we can't bring anything to Comic-Con that we're not ready for the world to see now. So no more exclusives for people at Comic-Con because now we know that if we bring something there, we have to put it out to the world, right, the world right away. And if we're not ready or we don't think it fits into our marketing plan to put it out right now, then no footage for you at Comic-Con. And that's what I fear. Like, I fear that happening. I, I think you're absolutely right, though, when you point out there is that element that you should expect when you play something in front of 7,000 people that something will slip out. Obviously, Warner Brothers was prepared for that, so they said, okay, it got out, put out the full trailer right. with Suicide Squad. Obviously, Fox was prepared for that, okay, it got out, put out the full thing for Fox. But obviously, Deadpool, Deadpool, they said, look, we're going to put yeah, it out in three, three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks, yes. Which is great. So now what I fear is that the fans of Comic-Con are going to suffer in the future because studios will now know we can't bring anything to Comic-Con that we're not ready to put out to the That's world right I just now. disagree with you. I think the fear thing is, it shouldn't be there. It's like, hey, look, they should be ready for the fans to accept it. They should be ready for the fans to see it. They should change their marketing plans if they haven't already and adjust to the giant monster that San Diego Comic-Con is and just, hey, this is our marketing plan now. We're going to get all those people. It's free advertising. Don't be stupid and be weird. Our marketing plan for three months, shut up. I don't believe it. So you think your marketing plan should be, should be completely circled around the 6,000 people are going to be no, I think it's not the six. It's not the 6,000 people. It's the people leaking it. Well, yeah, and that, that's and true, that too. And that won't stop. Okay. That's what I'm saying. My, I'm not talking about 6,000 people who saw it exclusively. That could be 6,000 or it could be 300. It could be one person. That's you know, how it works. I, when, this is the other thing I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of that when, when you go to a really big films advanced screening here in Hollywood, right? Like when we get invited mm -hmm. to go to some big things. Sure. What will happen at a lot of them, a lot of the ones that they're really, really uptight about having leaked out, when you go into the theater... They take your cell phone. Yeah, they from do. You, they you have to your check phone. your phone. So you give them your cell phone. They put it into a Ziploc bag with a number, and they give you another ticket that has that same number. And you have to check in, uh, check in your phone. And then it's a bit of a nightmare when you come oh, out of those things totally. to get your phones back. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid of that happening at Hall H in the future, where it's like, hey, get, come on in, folks, but you cannot have your phone because people will pirate it so we want to take it i'm so afraid of that happening i hope it doesn't that would be insane thinks thinks one think. way i think a different way on it mark 
I'm the kid Break in the back seat here. watching mom and dad fight. Like, where are we going for dinner? I don't know. I just want to get to grandma's house. I have a lot of opinions on this issue as well. But it, like, one of the things that I'll say right off the bat is that when you go to San Diego, the fervor that is Comic Con, Hall H is an exclusive nightclub. I don't care if it's 6,000 people in here. Anywhere else in the world, that would be a 300-seater. So there should be added security to make sure nobody has their phones out, but it's impossible to do in this day and age. The way that Buzz is created now is a lot different than it was even five, 10 years ago. Hall H was the way you create Buzz for studios because nobody really worried about having a phone and doing this. Now you can do that all the time, and it's so hard to monitor that. Now from a consumer, I'm gonna turn into a frosted mini wheat real quick, okay? Okay? Because the consumer side of me and the artist side of me have very different opinions on this. The consumer side of me sees something like Dead Poor Suicide Squad Get Leaked and is like, that is actually great advertisement for that movie because it's not like it's getting leaked from an editing bay. It's getting leaked from a hall with 6,000 fans going crazy. So at home you're watching that and it's like when you're watching a sitcom. Maybe you didn't think that joke was that funny. There's a studio audience there laughing so you give it the credibility of being, oh yeah, I guess that was kind of a good joke. Same thing in Hall H. You see fans loving something, you are gonna be more inclined to love it so it does help the studio. Now the artist side of me feels differently and I know Schnepp would feel the same way too. If your movie wasn't quite finished but you wanted to show it to a few of your buddies and one of them took out their cell phone and showed and show and put it on the internet before you were ready to see it or if I was doing a set somewhere and I'm working out new material and somebody gets footage of that and puts it online before I can put it on TV that's a horrific experience as an artist because now it's like no no part of it is a surprise is is you not knowing that this is coming it's impossible to do somewhere as big as Hall H. And what a franchise like Star Wars can do is say, hey, we don't need to worry about showing it to a group of people. We can put it online the day after Thanksgiving and break the internet. So I think that's what studios are going to start yeah. doing more so. However, there's enough movies and enough studios competing for prime time in Hall H where you're always going to get an exciting trailer. So if we weren't going crazy about Deadpool or Suicide Squad, we'd be going crazy about the Hunger Games trailer that nobody else got to see yet. So there's always going to be exciting content to show in Hall H. I hope that studios keep bringing their really cool stuff. But in the future, I just don't think they're, they're, they might turn into Marvel. What Marvel did this past year is yeah. like, hey, we're not even going to bring footage because maybe we have some Civil War stuff. We just can't show it yet or we don't feel comfortable showing it. So we're not going to bring it. That's the fear that I have because it's really exciting being in Hall H, but that's that's the way the world is going. So it's it's hard to be the artist and the consumer. At the but same I think time. Mar Marvel not showing is for completely different reasons, completely political reasons. They're going to just show that footage at like D23 but or whatever. But in a more know. controlled environment more, more that controlled they control. Sure. And so it's kind of the same thing. But honestly, I... I don't fear that. I think it's like, look, if you're going to bring something to the table, like what the, it's like mega con, it's like super con, whatever, you know, it's not even comic con anymore. It's like I mean, everything con, you know, it's like everything, the kitchen sink con. It's like, Everybody's there, so it's like <laughs> kitchen I, sink con yeah. is actually Home Depot. Yeah, you definitely, just go there and, you know, guys, <laughs> might as well start start up kitchen sink con. That sounds pretty awesome. But uh, are you guys ready for the Jet Spray Three Thousand? I I used to love those exclusive previews. That then you would come back and be like, my God, I saw this amazing stuff. That's not the world we live in now. That's right. all I'm saying. And I think studios should be prepared for that and not slap the the hand of the fans that it's just going to get talked about. It's going to get spread around. That's our culture now, That our phone culture. You can't get mad at everybody. It's like, look, you accept it and bring it into your marketing plan because it works. Mm -hmm. Look at the numbers of every single one of those leaked trailers. And then when they leak, the leaked ones don't even have the numbers that the actual real one, when they finally were like, look, we're going to put the Suicide Squad up. Bam, like 15, yeah, but it would have had the, It would have had those numbers that they released in three weeks. But I think ultimately we, we agree on a bunch of the key points here. Because sure. what we're actually talking about are several different issues. If we just bring it down to the issue of, okay, if the studio is going to show you footage in Hall H and they ask you, please do not take out your phone and record this, we all agree you should not you should take out your phone and record enjoy this. Enjoy watching it. Right. Yeah. If a studio does bring their stuff and show it, they should be prepared that it may very well, and there's a high probability that it will leak. I think we all agree on that. Mm -hmm. And I think we all also agree that then if you're a studio, don't bring something to Comic-Con unless you are indeed ready for the world to see it and you want the world to see it and you don't have a big problem with the world seeing it right now. I think we all agree on that as well. Yep. And I think we also all agree that there, there is, you may not on this, there's a bit of a fear then that like Marvel, like maybe some others, that Warner Brothers or Fox, that these guys at this point may go, okay, we're not gonna bring the super cool stuff anymore and i'm worried about that i'm just a little bit worried about it whether they should or shouldn't 
think that way. That's another issue too. But I'm a little bit worried about those things. You know, we we might pass. have all overreacted right. to this just a little bit anyway because this is the file from Comic Con. It's the same thing when Halloween night. You, you get a bunch of candy, and your parents say, don't eat all that candy, or you're going to get sick. What do you, the next day, you eat all the candy, you get sick, and your parents yell at you. What's going to happen next year? Well, Same thing. You're going to go <laughs> trick or treat. You're going to get your candy, and you're going to eat too much of it again. Yeah, I, th I was going to say you don't eat all of it because there might be a razor blade in one of them. You know, it's like because that's, that's the, the world apple. we live in. Yeah. 